I'm doing that then. Okay, yeah, I'm going. So do you want to intro again? Uh, I don't have anything prepared. Uh, I mean, I can do that then. Or if I you just use the... this shit thing of us talking as an intro okay. to show how absolutely unprofessional we are. Now we're totally pros. Yeah. Like, this is why we just had to f remember what audio bitrate we're using because we're totally professional and we're not like forgetting that because we're stupid it's just that you know we're professional or say i'm not i'm not you know he didn't care i'm the one who stresses about dumb things yeah mm. i mean to be fair that's not dumb because it doesn't get like impossible to sync up but yeah, yeah like yeah. literally impossible uh, yeah. Just, so hi yeah hi um welcome <laughs> back to the most ghetto unprofessional podcast you will ever stumble upon will browse the hood cast in the ghetto. and run away from as fast as possible and you're probably already gone so i don't even know why i'm talking to you at this point but freaks. um welcome if you're still here and welcome uh, to our house. yeah so yeah i guess let's start talking about shit Garms, what Garms have we been yes. playing? Garms, we've been playing. Uh, you want to start this? Uh, well, I've pretty much just been playing Guild Wars. Guild okay. Wars 2, doing lots of dubby dubs and Guild. Fallout, but I haven't really been playing much. Again, still, because I'm still like tied to my base. Hmm. I did some dubby dub the other day, which was quite amusing. Um, the servers were having a bit of an issue. So normally in WW, you know, 150 ping is normal because you have 300 people or so fighting. But this was an, a particularly exceptional night because we were getting about 30 ping until two groups met each other and then it would spike to about three and a half thousand and stay there until the fight was over. So the commander, I was on TeamSpeak, so I would hear the commander say, we're going now. And I would start running and then by the time the game caught up, I would realize that the entire Zerg was not running with me, but they were somewhere else. It's just that my client, the last thing I got was they're running this direction. So I got killed a lot because I thought that we were all in a different place and yeah. Lots of dying on all sides, and it was kind of glorious. And I hate, hmm. I hate the lag. Fun. Yeah, I once I... played uh, Serious Sam with the person hosting uh, using college internet. My ping was about 5,000. I actually used to play uh, Global Jindo with a guy from South Africa. He literally always had 900 ping, no matter what. <laughs> like, he never got any lower. Hmm. And he was the best freaking player I ever met, so I guess it worked for him. <laughs> hmm. He, I don't think he ever really died in a mission that I could remember. Yeah. Huh. Ping is the best and worst. Yep. This is a fact. So, yeah. Um, I have been playing AM2R because I got it before Nintendo whipped their dicks out and pulled it down. Uh, now they're just pounding it. Yep. One second. Okay. <laughs> Your children. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> I've also got a few in my attic, but no one's called the cops on me for it yet. I'm assuming it's fine then. <laughs> it's fine until you get that. I'm sorry, NSA. <laughs> you are now on a watch list. Probably oh, me yeah, too. I was probably already on one. Yeah. I think we've been on that watch list since about your, mm, February. Oh, I was on a Reddit thread about a lolly, Whenever we start lolly hentai. Just because I was bored and it was like the, the top post of the day and I was like, oh, I'll read this thread and I realized I'm on like 8,000 lists now. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, the, the they know I was reading about lollies. Anyway. Uh, another thing I've been playing. Um, just... Yesterday, I started playing a bit of Metal Gear Solid Five again, which I've already spent over 200 hours in that game, so that could be a dangerous thing. Because, um, yeah, someone asked if I wanted to play Metal Gear online with them. So Metal figured, Gear. So I figured I should play a bit more of the game so they don't suck. And, As uh, if that yeah. would help. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm going to fucking die. Uh, Metal Gear Online 2, which was with Metal Gear Solid 4, is actually where Get Good originated from. So, in other mm. words, I'm fucked. 
Oh, that's like good because that's right a, up the butthole. I didn't know Nolly no. came from Metal Gear. Hmm. Uh, that's a peripheries basis last name is like literally just get good. <laughs> so he did. He very much did. It's my favorite okay. thing. But yeah. Uh, what else have we been playing? Honeycam Studio. Fuck. Yes, yes, I've been playing all of that. Mm -hmm. Check out my Let's Play. Oh, speaking of Let's Plays, I am actually doing a legitimate Let's Play of Deus Ex, so I've been playing that. We were um, doing the Serious Sam, but then Windows. Shameless self-promotion. Go watch my freaking Let's Play. I recommend starting with Episode 3. The first two suck balls. I also just started a music channel for me playing bass and maybe singing if I ever get set up for that, so I guess I'm like that too. Hmm. So, okay. And, yeah. and I'm also at some point I want to record a heavily modded Fallout uh, edited video for this channel I just recording Fallout is about as nightmarish as recording anything can get hmm. because it's just so janky and really unreliable it's hard to keep the thing interesting for that long so yeah. Yeah. I remember the um, the first time I tried doing a let's play of any kind it was Oblivion and I turned the difficulty like way up and I was doing it um one death and start a new character if you die I walked into a dungeon got hit by a fireball and instantly died I actually uh, I have a character on good luck Fallout. finding that I'm playing in survival mode with all the difficulty on three times what it normally is in survival because it's normally a two and a half or no I think for enemies they deal two times as much to you and I deal one and a half times as much to them but I have it all cranked up to three times that so basically everything is one shots I'm playing permadeath, and I have not died yet. Mm. I've been shot, but it was a long enough range that I'm only on like I I'm pretty. If I ever get hit again, I'm dead. But it's I think I've had that character for like ten hours now and have not lost it. So that's cool. It is permadeath is one of the best ways to make an easy game really really hard. Yep. Especially in MMOs like Guild Wars, I do that a lot. I'll see how how high a level I can get my character to before I die. I usually fall off a cliff and splatter, and that's why I die. So I'll be like, oh, I want some loot. I'll go do a jumping puzzle, and then I jump, uh, but I don't puzzle very well, so then I'm dead. But yeah, it's a mm. thing. So yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that might have. I ain't got shit, Captain. It's been like a while since the last episode was recorded. A month, over a month, actually, I think. Yeah, we're we're very non-professional. I totally didn't forget to edit it like two weeks in a row either. That's not a thing that happened. Nope. That's why it's way late and why like there's no content on the channel for. Well, it's not like we have people waiting for it or anything, but you know. Yeah, but I still get really salty when I forget things. <laughs> You're the one person who cares. Yeah. Uh, I I hold myself to way too high of a quality standard, considering that I have no ability to put out that much quality. <laughs> Like, I want this to be flawless, and I can almost get it to not horrible levels. And it's like, eh, might as well. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully we have more than two subs, one of which is me, the other is a friend of mine. That times and happens. I, I might be a sub to my main channel. I'm not actually sure. I don't know if I'm subscribed to myself. You're, you're not subscribed to this channel. Dang. Oh, okay. So we will have three. Actually, I have like eight channels, so I could just sub to you on all of them. <laughs> that's probably against TOS. Like, that's gotta be against terms of service. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we're not making any money. Yeah. Actually, if we were, then they couldn't ban us for making the money. Anyway. Next topic. <laughs> uh, okay, so our gaming topic this segment of time unknown to myself currently um consoles are changing and and yeah. by that i mean they're going extinct <laughs> they're shit yeah they really should have gone extinct about oh before they were invented but they didn't so yeah well, the, the I news mean, that, no there's a you know sega genesis and i mean Nintendo, like that kind of stuff. i mean like that the, was nice. the last 20 years of consoles should have been better if it had been put towards PCs, because by then PCs would have been so available and dirt cheap, it's like. Mm. I, th I think the main time when consoles started becoming like 
it's like really shit it was like about halfway through seventh gen so that would be ps3 and xbox 360 yeah. Like, even, like, the beginning of those generations, I just didn't have anything I liked. Like, I think the PS2 and Xbox were the two last really good consoles. Yeah. Well, I'd say GameCube was, like, also really good. It's just yeah. that it didn't have as big a catalog as, say, PS2. Yeah. And now I you like can... It's like a Genesis, but, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm weird because I like Golden Axe. I played the game so much with my sister when I was little. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Yeah, the news I brought on this topic was um, Bethesda was working with Sony and Microsoft to get mods in Skyrim and Fallout 4. And basically, Sony was like, yep, we're going to do this. They pretty much got it in right away. And then Sony was for months saying, oh, we're, you know, we're kind of maybe working on this, might happen. And Bethesda was like, yeah, we've got this. We're going to do it. And then just today, they basically said, JK, we're not getting mods because Sony are douchebags, which doesn't surprise me because they are. They have a pretty bad habit of doing that lately. Um, which is funny, because they used to be considered like the good guys of the console world. Mm. And now they're not. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of Very weird shit. that, you know, when your competitor is doing all this stuff and is really being a lot more open to the fan base and people are obviously accepting it and being glad about it, why do you go and get more and more closed? Because, you know, Microsoft scummy as they are, much as I hate the Xbox, just because I don't like consoles, um the ability to have mods on a console is kind of amazing. Yeah, that that, that would be a, a huge for consoles because that's one of the main things PC has had over them. Yeah. That's like the longest fucking time. I'm like I don't even I'm not even affected by it cuz I play on PC, but like I'm still ticked off at like Yeah. For Fallout and Skyrim, like Elder Scrolls and Fallout are just so mod heavy. Like, I would not have played 167 hours of Fallout 4 if I had not had mods. Because yeah. that's yeah, no. what made the game. I mean, my Fallout 4 install looks nothing like it did when it was stock. It's a completely different game, and that's what's awesome about it. And you're just basically decreasing a reason to sell it in the first place, and you're giving people less a reason to keep with it so DLC won't be sold. And I believe Sony does get a pretty big profit whenever a game or DLC is sold from the developers, because they have to license and all that. So Sony's kind of costing themselves money by doing this. I don't... Well, no, I think what their intention to do is to make... Is because so many mods are in, inspired DLCs to not allow the mods so that people have to buy the DLCs because we who we're asshats. Well, that's the developer's choice, though. It's not the publisher. Well, yeah, but the publisher There's, knows the, the reasoning developer does the... that. Yeah, but the reasoning was that um, this is just talking. I don't know if they were talking with anyone else about mods, but I think what the reasoning they gave was like, or the criteria they had was nothing that changes any changes or adds any audio. So basically, if you had a gun mod, you would have to use stock audio. And like, I know a ton of mods that just do that. They were add guns and give new sounds to them. And then my favorite mod for Fallout Four is a reverb thing that gives like you know Battlefield style echoes and acoustics and everything, and it's amazing. And I'm like. Why would you not want that? And I think it's them trying to keep the PS4 OS locked down or hardware so that they can, like, not... I guess because they have a bit of a security issue because they're Sony. So I think they're kind of paranoid about that, and they really... Uh, they're Japanese or Korean? Uh, I think Japanese. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Cause it could be wrong. Japanese... Well, I mean, Asian companies in general, I guess, have a really bad habit of being kind of closed about things. Um, yeah. Which is fine for a lot of stuff, but when you're running a console I mean, that is very much about P gaming, PC gaming is, it's... PC gaming is pretty much non-existent in Japan. Yeah. So there's there's that, too. But still, they have American branches, and they should be doing research about the countries they're marketing to. So they have no excuse for being jackasses. And not to mention that they are kind of backpedaling on all of this because they were making a lot of like even the PS2 you could install Linux on it, which was ridiculous. And then the yeah. PS3, um, I don't know if they had anything big forward with the PS3, but you know they had free multiplayer. It's a big thing. Then with PS Plus, they rolled back on that, so now you have to pay for multiplayer. You get free games every month, sure, but the games have been kind of garbage as of late, from what I've been told. And there's mm -hmm. just like 
really there's no benefit to getting a PS4 over an Xbox anyway, because for me, I'd rather have Halo and mods <laughs> than Killzone and no mods, because I don't care about Killzone. <laughs> yeah, no one really does. Just the only people who cared about happened. Killzone are the people who bought a PS4 at release, and then they were very sad because that game sucked. So, yeah. yeah. I just... I mean, I've heard the original is good. I'm going to have to play that at some point. It's just people are so determined to shoot themselves in the feet. I don't get it. Welcome to humanity. It kind of sucks. I need to turn that into a t-shirt. I've been saying that for a while. Yeah. I think another example of that is actually... Um... Well, it's not really an example of something that's changing, but it's a long-term thing, is Nintendo has always had a very closed attitude. And if you notice, no one develops anything good for Nintendo consoles, aside from Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to be what happens with the PS3 or 4 or 8,000 or whatever the crap, but I think they're certainly going to... You know, if mods become a common thing, I think developers that are into modding are going to be less willing to you know, support the game on PS4. Because I mean, it's already using OpenGL in a world where most games use DirectX, so you have to adjust for that. And you're already developing for different hardware, so you could just cut out that entire part, and you would save resources and time and money, and you wouldn't have any reason to really not do that. Especially if PC and Xbox keep growing, because a lot of people have been switching because of this kind of crap. Yeah. Which is good. I think that, you know, even Xbox, because it's becoming so tied in with Windows now, eventually I'm sure we'll be able to play Halo on Windows just by oh, yeah. logging in. I mean, they've already ported the engine, because with Forge mode and whatnot, they're yeah. just not allowing the base game to be played. To which I say to Microsoft, why are you so financially suicidal you would make billions if you freaking put Halo on PC? Because Xbox must be sold and we're fucking Microsoft. So we do jack shit if people want us to do it. I think it's, this is the, game, the same company that's restricting DirectX to all the Windows 10. Which yeah. I, I know why. Because it's like a really heavy change to the kernel and OS itself. But like, really? Really? It's the same thing as Windows 8.1. Mm-hmm. You could have just built it onto 8.1 and then used 8.1 with DirectX 12 support to build 10. You would have at least had two OSs there. I mean, since 7, I think actually since Vista, the kernel has basically been the same as far as, you know, all that. So there's no reason to not. Yeah. But we we don't like to remember that Vista existed. So. Yeah. We're the just only good thing seven. to come out of Vista was a tiling window manager. <laughs> Which, I mean, Linux has had that since the dawn of time, and yeah. Yeah, no, Vista's pretty shit. Vista would have been fine if it wasn't $200 and wasn't, like, built for hard hardware that was uh, not available for people. Like, you know, I'm sure if you had a high-end and workstation, the, it was great, but... And if it weren't the reason that the PC port of Halo 2 is shit. Yeah. Because I so definitely hold it accountable for that. I love Halo 2 so much. And yeah, Halo 2 I, is fucking great. Like, I have the box on my shelf, and I'm just like, why? Yeah, no, same. I can see it, like, right over there from me. I'm pointing at it. I can go grab it and lick it if I want to. I have a well, ton of box. I have Spore up there. I need to reinstall and play that again. Do you know that the servers for Dark Spore got taken down, so now you can't play it? Yeah, which is kind of a shame. Like, I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was really fun. I mean, it's not... It's just Diablo with this, this cheap Diablo yeah. with this foreskin, but it was still cool, and there was a lot of visual effects that were neat. I think the futuristic setting for that kind of game is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was cool. It was just kind of the game that I bought and played over a weekend and never touched again. Yeah, that was me, too. I think a lot of it for me was the fact it was online. I couldn't just go solo. Like, I always had to yeah. wait for a freaking group. Which is a big problem with any action RPG. You do not want to have to wait yeah, to do anything. Yeah, no. They're very much about going fast and killing things. Yep. That's why I like Torchlight. Because my character just one-shots everything. And I can just blaze through a level mindlessly. Because uh, it's fun. Yeah, Torchlight's fun. Yeah, it's just... Hmm. I think one thing that consoles need to do... 
mouse and keyboard support. Like, really. I mean, Xbox has had, quote unquote, had mouse and keyboard support. There was a third party for one quite for a while. 360. But... Yeah. Um, and did they ever make an official one for the X Bone? I know they said they were going to. Uh, I'm not sure. I think maybe for using in home streaming. Hmm. But I'm not sure. But yeah, they do need mouse and keyboard support because it's just a superior way to play a lot of genres. Yeah, like especially RTSs. You cannot play an RTS with a controller. Like, let's be honest here. Halo Wars kind of made it work. I mean, the game was well, not that. I guess there was also like Overlord, but that barely counts as RTS. Yeah, no, no, that doesn't, doesn't count. Um, and then first person shooters. Why would you want to aim with an analog stick? Yes, yeah, so that's ever. My gripe. It's it's it looks like a fucking rubber doorknob that you whittle around, as opposed to a precision thing made for moving something like you know what's the word precise. Yeah. The thing like even racing games and all the people are like oh you can't use a mouse and keyboard for racing games, dude. I won so many races in Burnout, a Paradise multiplayer, and I never used a controller with that game. Like, I was on the leaderboards for a ton of stuff, and I used mouse and keyboard, because for arcade racers, it is so much oh, for faster. For arcade raider, uh, racers, yeah. Yes. I mean, you don't, if, if you're going to play an actual sim racer, you want to wheel yeah. anyway. But, I mean, like, for Burnout, Need for Speed and stuff, mouse and keyboard is amazing, because it's so fast to respond, especially for Burnout, because the cars are weightless. And I just... Yeah. I just get sick of people who are like, oh, you know, there's no re mouse and keyboard is not better than the controller because it blatantly is. Even my movement is more precise with mouse and keyboard than controller, so I don't. I mean, but there there are games that you should play with the controller, like Devil yeah. May Cry yeah, and fighting whatnot. games. Uh, I think even action RPGs like Diablo style stuff would be really is really fun with it, but it depends uh, on the class though. Yeah, I wouldn't do ranged. D Melee depending on good. how they implement controller support, yeah. Like um, I played a Path of Exile on my melee character. I couldn't do it with my witch, though, because it's just... Aiming is so hard with ranged weapons with those things, but... Yeah. And, um... More back on top of the consoles changing. Um... They're, they're just... They're trying so hard to add PC-like features, but they're always just, like, shitty watered-down versions, like their Twitch streaming support. It's not just not. PC features, they're trying to put them out like PCs, you know, different models yeah. and levels of hardware, and it's like, at that point, why don't you just sell it as a PC that comes with a custom OS and controller, like a Steam machine? Yeah. Because at that point, you can just basically use desktop hardware and use desktop games, but you get the ability to have it more portable. It's just a smaller form factor PC. And that seems, like, just way too logical, because, I mean, really... And then you can actually have Steam streaming and stuff work because the software already exists for PC. Yeah. It's just, it's just so infuriating. It just... Uh, but everyone knows all PC gamers are pirates and you can't pirate console games, obviously. <laughs> when you very easily can pirate console games. Yeah, let me go up on Pirate Bay and download you about a thousand copies of Call of Duty Black Ops for Xbox. And uh, then you can tell me you can't pirate for consoles. It's probably uh, easier because most of it doesn't have freaking like oh, yeah. janky installers yeah. you have to go through. You just gotta um, put it on a flash drive and plug it in. Well, no, you also have to um, jailbreak the console. Yeah, but that's not hard. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's a very bullshit argument. And not to mention saying that PC gamers all pirate is bullcrap. In fact, yes, funny statistic, yeah. apparently. Piracy is actually the highest when you're very poor and very rich. So, like, if you make a hundred grand plus a year, you're actually more likely to pirate than if you make fifty grand, or mm. about equal if you make like fifteen. Which is funny that realistically, you know, people who don't make much, I can understand because you don't yeah. have the money to do that. You know, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't think that sixty dollars for the eight thousandth Call of Duty game in a row that's exactly the same is really worth it. And I think that. It would be better to spend that money on food than yeah. a hobby. 
and then it was like if you're in 50 grand range or you know whatever your equivalent is i live in texas so 50 grand is pretty good you know then i at that point you can buy it reasonably but if you're like making 600 grand a year and you're pirating indie games why just just throw yourself off a cliff and write your will to leave us everything please it's like i don't get people who say piracy is never okay yeah. These are the same people who are like, oh, you should feed the homeless because they can't get anything. Well, I mean, people can't always afford games. Yeah. I'm sorry, like, oh, you can afford a PC, you can afford games. No, because my computer costs as much as 10 AAA games. Only 10. Mm-hmm. I could beat 10 AAA games in a month. It took me more than a month to get the money for this computer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. really. Heck, I could probably beat them in less than a month. AAA games are freaking short these days. Yeah, they are. So they, that, but that's that's topic for another time. Yeah. But, uh, Although if you're going indie games, I could probably be, get like twelve thousand and play them for a few years. But not everyone likes indie games. But yeah, yeah. It's just like I don't get people who are like, "Oh, you're so filthy scrub lord. You want to pirate games?" Because well, I don't have any other way to. Like that's the yeah. And I mean, it's been studied. You know, most people who buy a game and they or pirate a game and they really like it will go and buy it when they have money. Yeah. If it's a game I know I like, I'm going to buy it. But if it, I don't know, I'll pirate it, and then, like, if it doesn't work, or if it's just garbage, you know, I'll play it for a few hours, I'm like, well, this doesn't really work for me, and I'll, you know, it's a demo. Yeah. I use it as a demo, and the only game that I have not paid for is No Man's Sky, because the game just doesn't work. <laughs> it <laughs> flat out does not work. I was like, maybe I'll try this, and then maybe I'll fix it and buy it, but to this point, they have not fixed it. I have not played it since the first couple of days, because I just... I'm like why? Yeah. Like it's it's a demo, and if you're not going to give me a demo, then I'm going to use a better alternative. To quote Gabe Newell, if you want people to stop pirating, then you have to provide a better service. And yep. I wouldn't say that Steam is necessarily better, but it's a lot easier and more reliable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, before I move on to the next topic. Yeah. After yeah. Um. So, movie of the week. Uh, I went with one that doesn't take much talking about to summarize and ties into the movie topic. And that is V for Vendetta, which came out in 2006, I believe. Neckbeards. The, the movie, not the, um, not, not the graphic novel it's based on, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So, the thing that's so nice about this movie is that it takes... Like all the ideas and whatnot from uh, 1984, the book, not the year, uh, and it kind of streamlines them and makes it about like a vigilante kind of character, and it's all about a guy whose name is never heard and face is never shown. It's just like the idea that it could be anyone is kind of cool, and uh, you know the idea of revolution it's just it's all about the themes really if you like like themes like that you'll like this movie um i mean yeah it, it's uh based off a graphic novel written by alan moore who's known for his other works uh such as the watchman and uh, the killing joke um, i'm sure but, guy Fox would know a lot about view for vendetta huh Yep. Okay, so then, since, yeah, there's not a whole lot else to say about that, uh, moving into the movie topic this week, adaptations. So, if you look through a list of the greatest movies ever, you'll notice a lot of them are adaptations. And that's partially because, well, one, if you're at adapting something you know it's the quality of the story so then you just have to worry about the quality of the adaption and uh Unless you're two, of the rings movies in which case you need to get rid of all that crap <laughs> uh and two uh publishers feel a lot safer making something that has to do with the fan base that already exists but um yeah my um my two favorite movies are actually both adaptations uh, and I'll be using them as an example because one is um, from what I've heard a closer adaptation and a looser adaptation 
The closer adaptation is Fight Club, and the looser adaptation is Blade Runner. Um, uh, gonna talk about close adaptations first, because they're a lot simpler to cover. Basically, you just look at what's in the book or video game or what have you. If you're making a video game-based movie, you're an idiot. Um, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you just, like, you read a scene, you change what needs to be changed for it to work well. And actually a per- a really, really good, um, example would be, um, the Dark Knight Returns movies, which are, uh, animated movies based off of graphic novel. But I'm not gonna talk about those, because that would be its own thing. Um, and then there's the loose adaptation route, um, which I show attempt not to spoil, but um, Blade Runner is based off of a book called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? They changed the name for obvious reasons, but um, yeah, no, if you watch the first few scenes of Blade Runner and read a, the first chapter of the book, you'll realize that they have a few similarities, and they're going in the same direction, but they're really not, like, that same at all. Because, I mean, the movie was made about two decades, you know, a decade and a half after the book. It was in the 80s, and Escape from New York had come out, and they wanted to make it kind of, you know, pretty. And they decided to, you know, change things to make it more mm, compact. So instead of making the main character a bounty hunter, they made him this type of cop that hunts down rogue androids and stuff. Like, it's taking creative freedoms and whatnot with your adaptations. Is there anything you want to say about adaptations? Um, I guess I'm going to put on my two or, well, my one favorite movie is an adaptation, Coraline. I that, haven't read the book, adaptation? but I need to. Yeah, it was originally a, I don't know what kind of book, but a, I assume a horrifying one, if it's anything like the movie. Okay. Um, but yeah. Hmm. Every adaptation I've seen has been, like, Lord of the Rings. I mean, I, I hate the books, but the movies are certainly better than the books, so. <laughs> Although, I like the Hobbit book and don't like the Hobbit movie, but I like the Lord of the Rings movies and don't like the books so I guess like Harry Potter I don't really care that much for it but I mean I don't hate it it's just not really the best thing ever to me yeah and you know of course there's the greatest movie ever was adapted and that is of course Fifty Shades of Grey yeah it's on my top ten of all time list Uh, also the um, amazing classics Twilight Uh, do do adapt do adapt (laughs) eh adaptations from uh, one form of visual like movie to cartoon or cartoon to movie work because, yeah uh, yeah make a special mention here the last airbender <laughs> oh, oh no oh no there heresy no. heresy no that doesn't exist <laughs> oh god the waveforms and audacity <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah. no that doesn't exist shut up it's the best go away <laughs> Go away. I can't wait for The Legend of Korra. Oh, wait, are they actually the... making that? No, but if they do... God. If they do, I'm going to kill M. Night Shyamalan. No, it'll be directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> that might be better. Yeah, at least he would probably have the firebenders work properly then. Oh, yeah. The explosion benders. Maybe they'd be able to pronounce Aang. <laughs> <sighs> Aang, are you the Arbender? I am on the yes, Arbender I, court. Yes, I, I bend ours. I'm a bender, Fucking if you know what I mean, English people. English man, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny these allegations. Twenty-five, seventy-five. Okay, so now that that happened, um, I was... Anyway, anyway Blade Runner. <laughs> I'm going to completely change the... Mo- Actually, I'm not going back to Blade Runner. Um, oh, I could actually put that into what I want to talk about, so, yeah, sure, I'll use that. Um, so, uh, another thing you have to, uh, I should marry something I totally want to talk about after this, but, um, something you have to keep in mind is, 
what it's being adapted from is either visual or non-visual so say a book or a comic book yeah. so with ad adapting something non-visual like a book picking your art style or like prop aesthetics it's there will be people who hate it because everyone imagines it differently which is like Hermione quite is quite black risky. what? like Hermione from Harry Potter apparently she's black now hmm. which you know I, I know nothing about Harry Potter yeah. so. uh, very yeah, Irish cool. looking sort of pale skin red hair and uh, which is what you would expect you know from a young yeah. wizard person in a stereotypical English setting and I don't when I picture a stereotypical English person, it's not usually a black chick with an afro. I'm sorry. It's just not. Okay, so... I'm sorry, ranting. Be before we end this segment, because I can't think of much else to say, holy shit, the script for the movie adaptation of Neuromancer has been written, and it was written forever ago. Just fucking make it. <laughs> I am so pissed. It's been around for like what six, seven years, Speaking of and they started to work on it like three times, and they're still not okay. fucking making it. And the script was fucking adapted by the author himself. Make it. Yeah, you want something that needs a freaking movie adaptation so fucking bad? BattleTech. It is. It is That'd the. Per it's. It's the perfect option. It has thousands and thousands of books and so much lore i mean it's you could literally just like make this universe a simulation down to the detail there's so much stuff written about it why do we not have a movie pacific rim had been we can have battle tech i want to see the clan invasion in 4k <laughs> it needs Legendary to happen might be on board with that i would love to see that it's just so i mean it's one it's not like it's obscure i mean it is obscure but it's not like no one's ever heard of this. It is there's the perfect sci-fi setup, and it, it the the characters, the lore, the mechs, just everything about it makes too much sense. If we can get a freaking adaptation of Fifty Shades Grey, can we not get giant stompy robots? No, because soccer moms don't watch that. That's true. Soccer moms are apparently teenage girls love that crap. Yeah. Or even preteen girls, which is um the most disturbing. Yeah, part. that's that's really fucking disturbing which I think that could make its own topic just hey kitties want some 50 shades remember porn is bad but 50 shades of grey is completely fine <sighs> fucking hell Mark let's, let's not go on about western culture again if you bad. get distraught I'll never stop <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm with you there <laughs> We don't like America. That's why we live here. <laughs> we live in Texas, too. You can't complain it's about someone worse. else's country because it's like, oh, but you left. You got a better country. So it's like, you know, you don't have an excuse then. Wow. It affects us now so we can complain about it. <sighs> I like Texas except that I hate everything about Texas. I like the like idea the of Texas, but I hate else. everything about it. Yeah. Like, I'd like to move to Colorado or somewhere. I want to move to the middle of fucking nowhere and live in a log yeah. cabin. Like, I want to live on the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado, but have it be warm and also have Google Fiber. Yes. So I love the view from Pikes Peak. Except Canadian Rockies. Yeah. Canada has free healthcare, guys. You know they wait six months for it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh no, I'm I'm like going illegally across the border and building a log cabin somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. And then you'll find you a nice convince. beaver in a river somewhere. Yes. Get you a nice beaver mounted on your wall. <laughs> I'm from Texas. You can tell. I'm talking about shooting animals. Yeah. Mm. Everyone's already skipped to the next topic by now. Three odd six. Yeah, they just they should. Yeah. So What's I guess the next pray. topic on that note? Um, what? What's the next topic on that note? Uh, oh, the that's... evolution of sci-fi. <laughs> yes, so... Uh, oh, sorry. We used the word evolution. We've now offended okay. people. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I said that. That's offended yeah. people too now, so... Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck. Fundamentalist. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, stop swearing, you shit biscuit. We keep Don't say swears, you fucked hard. people. This fucking sucks dick. 
That's not equal. Women don't have dicks, so it's, that's just sexist. This fucking sucks, pussy. That, that, okay. I can get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> you have the test results. <laughs> it was against my will. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel bad for the people who skip straight to the section because they just <laughs> came in at that. <laughs> Breaking is intended. You know, my my idea of so early sci-fi funny. is like the Twilight Zone. So I mean, I love the Twilight Zone. I have mm. the box set. So. Oh, you do. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I watched that. Um, well, I think it's the, the best out of the 50th anniversary thing, but it's okay. amazing. I mean, there are a lot of really worlds. shit episodes of that. So. Yeah, I mean, Twilight Zone was like half terrible, but the good bits were worth it. Yeah, yeah, they were. Um, yeah, uh, when I think sci-fi, I generally think like you know, future sci-fi, like yeah. um, <clears throat> you know, Star Trek and uh, Starship Troopers, that kind of stuff. God. What? Starship Troopers. None of the book. I know, but still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that fucking movie. It's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, my, my dad uh, read the book growing up because his teacher recommended it to him. And when he saw the movie, uh, his description of how he felt was that it was, I don't remember, but I remember it was hilarious. I think you kind of, in sci-fi, you had, like, Star Trek and Star Trek Troopers, and, like, you had Star Wars, and then, like, everything cl yeah. cloned Star Wars. Yeah. Um, but I really like, um, you know, the the pre-Star Wars stuff, I need to watch a lot more, because it's like, there was Star Trek, and it's like, we're in space, there's this cool stuff. I love the aesthetic of the original series. Yeah. I even, like, even to the point that I made a replica phaser of the original series like i just i really love it um and then there's like you know in the 70s there were a lot of like good sci-fis there were also a lot of really kind of just okay sci-fis because it was like new and it's like oh we're gonna make like loads of this and uh yeah and that's, that's a period of sci-fis i need to watch more of there's actually a russian film uh, from that time period that um, we didn't discover over here until much, much later because of the Cold War. Um, I need to watch. Uh, I believe that's called um, Sol Solaris. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like three hours. So I need to watch that. Then after that, yeah, as you said, Star Wars happened. And that just changed everything. Which, love Star Wars, but I, I do wish some of the old stuff would pop up yeah. more. Like, I want, like, original Star Trek. Like, the reboots yeah. are okay, but... Yeah. I mean, I want just, like, the original Star Trek, but not so cheesy. Which I guess is kind of Stargate to some extent. Kind of. In a of. sort of way, but... Yeah, Star... I always forget Stargate exists. Yeah, the movie was kind of nice. Yeah. I like the TV show more, I think. Of course, you have stuff like Firefly. Rest in peace. I need to watch that still. So. And one of my favorite series is actually uh, the Chronicles of Riddick. Oh, wait. We forgot to talk about Alien. Alien was a oh, big yeah. um, turning point in sci-fi. That was showing, like, you know... The rise horror. of quality. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is a really quality film. Mm. Yeah. I think one thing with early sci-fi is not that it was necessarily, like, weird or like a bad idea it's just that it was so cheaply made <laughs> yeah yeah it was. Cause it was and then when people new. discovered 3d we fell back into that sort of pit yeah yeah that's that's another topic <laughs> um yeah so then after star wars there's like the 80s period where there's more like the cyberpunk sort of thing popping up but we talked about that last podcast so go watch that um and then in the 80s, there were also, like, you know, Star Trek movies. What else was there, really, in terms of, like, traditional sci-fi sort of stuff? 
after Star Wars ended. Uh, not much I can think of. Yes. I mean, yeah, I don't think there was much in the eighties. I don't have a whole horrible lot of movie knowledge, so. Yeah, I know you don't. I know something's gonna come to me later, and I'm gonna be like, "Oh fuck, I should have talked about that." Uh, oh crap! That one hentai film was great. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Hentai. The one. Yeah. <laughs> They're all great. <laughs> um. Then, like '90s, was a bit strange with sci-fi. That is a little bit strange in general. <laughs> Yeah, there were a lot of good movies in the 90s, but it was... It was a recovery from the 80s that was kind of like, let's go completely the other direction. Yep. And it was mixed results. Great great games, great movies, really great shit music. music. I had a lot, of, a lot of good 90s music. Well, I mean, late I 90s. Mean, Early yeah, 90s yeah, is just, late... like, we don't talk about it. Oof, oof, no. I guess most of my favorite bands are 90s bands that were very formed into the 2000s, so I've kind of grown with that but yeah. um so yeah sci-fi's from the 90s oh there's a really great one 99 uh the phantom menace mm, great film <laughs> love that shit now this is pod racing <laughs> or, or there, now this is shit posting <laughs> oh the phantom menace Every time Jarter comes on screen, though. Uh, <laughs> Liam Neeson was that movie's one saving. I don't know. He didn't quite save it. Yeah, he, he was close, though. He was. He came close. I mean, Obi Wan. It was the first appearance of like young Obi Wan. So that's. Mm. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like young Obi Wan in the Phantom Menace. I liked him in. Yeah. Uh, the, he was kind of like two. the Anakin. Like in the second and third, he was awesome, but. Yeah. And there he was just kind of like Anakin, but not whiny. Yeah. Which is still pretty bad. I mean. It's better than Anakin. Yeah, I mean. To be fair, being bathed in acid would be better than Anakin, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So then. Sci fi in the 2000s. Um, All the other than motion two thousands is anime. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I don't know much about any of that. Again, there's the Chronicles of Riddick, which are two thousands and are oh, freaking yeah. incredible. Yeah, oh, also in those. the nineties, Matrix. Oh yeah, Matrix. That was good. The first one, at least. There, there's one. One what? I didn't know any of those. What are you talking about? There's totally only one this Matrix. Is true. Movie. And it would rage against the machine, and that was as good as it was going to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the only thing I remember about the end of that movie was rage against the machine. You remember the uh, awesome slow mo thing that. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember the helicopter bit. Yeah. No spoilers. That, I, I'm that. jealous of that. <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix is, makes, is the thing that has single handedly made me wish I didn't have to learn anything. Like, I just want to, like, yeah. put in a floppy disk, because that could totally contain enough knowledge. <laughs> Floppy disk, no martial arts. I'll show you my floppy disk, girl. Floppy disk, know how to be a porn star. Yeah. You know, the the daily requirements stuff. Not floppy disk, know how hands. to be entertaining. Should yeah. use that. <laughs> floppy disk, know how to play bass, be really amazing. I've been having issues the last few days and it's killing me. And yeah. with bass, too. <laughs> I, just, I, I, don't, I haven't really paid any attention to TV shows since I was like four, and everything I watched when I was four was from the 90s, so. Either that or it was um, Star Wars, so. Well, I mean, I know there was Firefly and Dark Matter and a few, like. Yeah. Sci fi has, like, traditional style with sci fi has kind of been relegated to TV nowadays, hasn't yeah. it? Oh, I do remember shows like Eureka, which wasn't really, it was more of a sort of sci fi, semi realistic mystery thing. I don't know what it would really call It's science-based, but it's not like science mm. fiction spaceships and stuff. It's time travel and stuff a lot of times, so it's weird. Oh, but forgot it's to mention Doctor Who. Yeah. That, that was a pretty big one in terms of cultural relevance. 
Doctor Who was ruined by me f because there was one kid I knew who that was the only thing he ever watched and he ever talked about. <laughs> I think he loved it more than his family. So, yeah, okay. I, I just, I've just been conditioned to hate it. But I, I'm going to just say one thing that's going to piss off a lot of people. Rose is a shit character. Thank meme. But I need a microphone to drop right now. Water bottle. <laughs> that did not work. I hit my <laughs> mic, but it didn't make a drop sound. Um. Uh. Yeah. No. The thing is, she was the the first Doctor's companion in the reboot show, and she lasted for two seasons. So everyone's just developed attachment. It's just like, no, she's she's really not that good of a character. Apparently, everyone loves David Tennant. I mean, I. The bits I've seen of him haven't been that He's interesting, good. but I mean... He's good. I, I think I like so. the guy right after him a little bit more for personal... Like, I, I just find him to be more like myself. I well, mean, he's... Like somehow David Tennant has become the single face of Doctor Who, even when he's, like, not there anymore. Yeah, he kind of replaced the fourth Doctor in terms of popularity of the Doctor. Mm -hmm. which, the fourth Doctor is still amazing. He always will be. Um, and there was also this really shitty failed attempt at rebooting Doctor Who, which was a movie in the 90s that I need to check out because apparently it's just like garbage. I don't think Doctor Who would ever work as a movie. It's, it's just, no, it doesn't. I mean, it can have two-parters, but it's just supposed to be episodic. That's how it works. Anyway, yeah, that's that's sci-fi. Yeah. Dank fi has been going for fifty minutes now. Yeah. I haven't even gone through this entire can of water yet. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we should do a break. No, I get our break down. Boom, 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 boom. What? I'll be right back in the shit. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, he might be dead. What a shame. No regrets. Alright. <laughs> so, our next topic is the KKK, alternatively known as the Cloud Cuckoo Cux Clan. Alternatively known as those racist jackasses, mostly from Texas. <laughs> it's great living in Texas, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Sunshine and fucking rainbows. They're those great people who claim, We're Christian guys, we're ignoring everything the Bible says, but we're Christian guys. And we hate all non-white people, especially yeah. black people. Ignore the part in the Bible about, you know, don't hate or anything. We're totally Abraham Christian. Lincoln is Satan. Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Mm. And they uh, have pointy hats and robes and shit. So, mostly just shit, though. Yeah, yeah lot, lots of shit. And they're mostly inbred, so there's that. That's a lot. Uh, hmm. So yeah, they originated in, I believe, the early 1900s. I could be wrong, but... Um, the original was apparently in 1865, and then huh. they reformed in 1915. Okay, so I'm thinking about the reformation of the group. But anyway, um, they basically, you know, they conducted their weird cult shit and what not and s sadly no Shit. sex cult stuff because that's uh, the best kind of cult wait, stuff wait those exist because I might need to go uh, yeah them. those definitely yes. exist as, oh I those think are called BDSM dungeons primary right. kind oh yeah actually yeah. I mean I don't know you I think they, know, I, mean, I think I they know. prefer the term uh, layer <laughs> at least in Satanism <laughs> Anyway, that's a bad like that name. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to come to my dungeon? <laughs> Show me Barney. Barney in the dungeon. <laughs> that was an interesting mental image. 
apparently they had a really big problem with drugs, so I mean, uh, not too much of a stretch. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so KKK were um, seen publicly uh, as a charity organization because, you know, they gave to charity and people didn't really know about what they did in their non-sex cult practice. Um, so one day a reporter decided, you know, hey, I'm going to figure out what's really going on here. You know, that that whole thing that reporters do. Uh, so he discovers they're totally fucking racist and plan to do some shit. So he goes around, talks to people, and he's like, no one wants to shit talk them because they're a fucking charity organization. Um, and eventually he gets the Superman radio show to do it. And the Superman radio show pretty much takes down the KKK's public image. Um, I will link a video um, down below that explains that much better. It's a screw attack video of the desk of death battle, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, that's just a really interesting story. It's yeah. almost as weird as the whole Yakuza and police working together, but it's not. Actually, it might be weirder because Superman actually took down the KKK. Yep. In real life. Mm-hmm. With his weird pinch your penis. That's <laughs> true. That's, that's the weapon he used to take them down. Pre, Pre-mullet Superman. <laughs> Hashtag mullet for Superman. Business up front, party in the back. I'm just party mm. all around. Yeah. Unless, you know, an actual party, and I'm just sitting in the corner crying sadly. Seeing the corner enjoying the um, free alcohol. Yeah, I, I can't afford free alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> can't get invited to a party. <laughs> My family was all, we were playing board games, and they're all having cheese and wine. I'm like, I'm sitting here with some apple juice, feeling like a gangster. You're. Yes. I'm biased of glass. Yeah, I'm sitting here drinking sparkling water with my dusty freaking desk, and yeah, America. <laughs> That's how you know I'm hipster because I can have fancy water but can't clean. <sighs> uh, so yeah, the the KKK. My main gripe with them is the fact that they still fucking exist. <laughs> How do they still fucking exist? Like I don't even Red care because they're so yeah, <laughs> but they're, they're so small that they can't really do much. But just the fact that they still fucking exist is depressing. Honestly, like I'm not even angry. I'm just it's just well, fucking. Black sad. Lives Matter has popped up, and they're like black KKK, so. Yeah, they are pretty much. I love how funny it is that a group that claims to be so all about equality, not equality, they're a black supremacy group. They, they're yeah. literally the black KKK. They literally kill people. Yep. So, yeah. I don't give a crap what they say they're for. When they start proving that, then... And I mean, it's like, the argument is like, well, that's not real Black Lives Matter people doing that. Well, you know what? If white people stopped a freaking bus... And then everyone blamed it on the KKK. I don't think anyone would be defending the KKK. Yeah. You know. But they defend Black Lives Matter because white people weren't oppressed. Which, maybe no, but... It's 2016. That, that was generations ago. Yeah, you and not were, to mention... We're not part of that shit. We are not part of that shit. If you want to improve your public image with the world, maybe don't kill people. Yeah. Like, it didn't work that well for Hitler... Or anyone else ever in history. Like, um, you know, Ted Bundy, he is not viewed very positively. No. Now, they're not, you know, I'm not saying they're all serial killers, but they are killing people, whether, you know, directly or not. You know, they have stopped ambulances, which has killed people, and they've stopped flights, which can cause serious issues and can get people killed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people need flights for medical stuff. They need to fly to another country to get an operation done. You know, it's like, if you want to be peaceful protesters, maybe don't kill people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Protest if you want to, but maybe if you're saying you're not savages, don't protest like savages. <laughs> maybe you should just call this segment the KKK and Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Because those are both things in our list of topics, so I yeah. guess I can just check them both off. 
Yeah, and I know so many people were like, oh, Black Lives Matter is great. The idea is great. Yes. I think everyone should be equal. I think everyone should be treated like a human, because quite frankly, that's what we are. Humanism. But the thing is, is that... that I think so. Yeah. I, well, humanism has like a few different terms, but yeah. Yeah. Basically, that... You know, I'm... You know, I'm a feminist in the sense that I think we shouldn't treat women like crap. I'm a Black Lives Matter person in the sense that I think that we should treat them like anyone else. Because I'm hey, a KKK member in the sense that I want to wear the hat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't wear hats. Like, I have a beanie, but I can't wear it because I look retarded more so than usual. So it's like, I feel sad about that. Well, yes, but the thing about the KKK hat, no one can tell who you are. Yeah. I can I, like, petition them to wear cardboard or uh, paper bags on their head like the cardboard colored ones it would be the best I, they would have such a membership spike yes, who does not want to wear a plastic plastic paper bag and if they wore plastic bags it would get rid of the issue because it would suffocate <laughs> KKK plastic bags problem solved you guys are going to go great I promise self correcting problems yeah do plastic bags smoke a lot of heroin do some crocodile boom yep. go hug a nuclear reactor Nope. I say no Black Lives Matter. Just stop. Stop being dumb. Or we can just get the KKK and Black Lives Matter to just kill each other. Yeah, what if we send them all to like two remote islands war. and they have to like build their own armies and navies and like sail to each other's islands and kill each other? That would be an amazing TV And then show. whoever survives is sent to Sentinel Island where they can fight to their death to take over Sentinel Island and if they fail, they're gone. If they succeed, they can't get anywhere because they're on Sentinel Island. <laughs> Or we just kill them. No, but it's not as torturous. Yeah, true. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty good way to get rid of KKK yes. and pretty much everyone who's extremist about equality because it's not equality. Feminists. Um, and these feminists too think that everyone should be eradicated because that's ridiculous. Yes. Um, if you claim to be about equality but are killing or, or vouching for the killing of people, maybe don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my, my advice for life. Maybe don't kill people. Just, you know, guidelines. Yeah, I find it funny that the dark humored, supposedly violent emo kid is the one who's saying that. <laughs> That's the reputation I have. People who say that have no idea, but yeah. Because I'm like borderline pacifist. <laughs> ah, <that's great. sighs> I like having a reputation because it's really actually very amusing. It is. But like, mm. I I almost don't regret doing stupid shit just because it's really funny and when people just like don't think. <laughs> well, I mean, people never think. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, I've been in church long enough it, to know that. It died with the 1900s. Probably even before then. Oh yeah, significantly before then. But... It probably died mid 1800s. Like we got steam figured out and then we just stopped. <laughs> mm, I mean, we made it to space and then after that. That's true. I'd say, oh no, it it died when weed was introduced in the seventies. <laughs> That's when it died. Drugs didn't exist before the seventies. Well, I mean, that's that's when it became like you know huge with hippies. Apparently, fucking hippies. Um, well, music is like spiked and got massive during that time period, so I can't say <laughs> it's creative. But apparently, uh, LSA is apparently similar to LSD, and it's actually legal, so you can actually. If you want to be useless, you can make an LSA. You can also grow peyote and uh, opium poppies. Although, opium poppies, you can grow them to look at, but you can't touch them. So I'm sorry if you want to make... Like children? Opioids. Huh? Make children? Uh, the, the feminists don't like that. <laughs> Come um, on, that was, that was a good joke. Yeah, if you want to make children, go get some drugs. To be fair, <laughs> not the worst way. To, <laughs> it's probably might, might might be the worst way to do things. Maybe Bill Cosby would give you some great tips on that. Ah, uh, a little hanging fruit there. Mm -hmm. Guilty until proven, until proven innocent. Of course, that's how it works now. Yeah, unless you're a woman. Yep. Then you're oh, that's a subreddit. Always. What? I'm going to give you this link. Hold on. Well, should we save this for the next sec? Or two segments? I'm going to save it for piss, but now you know what it is. 
Okay. Oh, it is glorious. Well, read that's the uh, the title of. No, I, I haven't entered it. Well, uh, okay, let's let's not let's wait. Yeah, hang on. We gotta okay. we gotta we gotta resist. Anyway, yeah. <sighs> Deep breath. I'm, I'm going to cast down with the. Don't be a racist piece of shit. Really, really a straightforward thing. It's really not too hard to not be a racist piece of shit. Like I know people think, oh, it's just how you, you know they're born this way. I mean, I don't like cheesecake, but I don't go, like, burning down cheesecake factories. Actually, I love cheesecake, but, you know, just an example. Yeah. If I didn't like cheesecake, then I might need to be burned at the stake, but... <laughs> yeah. Cheesecake is amazing. It's, it's the answer to world peace. Yeah. No, that's, that's okay. eradicating men. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. The, these references make no sense <laughs> yeah no you, you really need I, I feel bad for people watching our podcast in reverse order in the future if we ever have any degree of success beautiful. that would be quite <laughs> fucking hilarious the reverse evolution of stupid in jokes <laughs> it's it's like uh, one of those movies where they cut it up and go all over the place where things slowly make sense yeah like, there's this one movie, I think it was, like, French, where all the scenes are played in reverse order. Hmm. I didn't we watch did, that movie. We did, like, come up with a list of all the in-jokes. Oh, We've yeah. got Rope Bunny, Number Six, Jet Fuel, uh, Joe Don't Yeah, I don't think Joe Jet Fuel is a podcast one. No, it's not like the pod, but, like, the Chars. Oh, oh, ours, yeah. You can, like, no, have, a, yeah. like, a, an episode Shit where you words. explain everything. Yeah. Um... We have mm -hmm. the psychopath with the butcher knife, mm -hmm. meat cleaver, whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, yeah we've got we we have That's enough in so jokes nice. to fill an entire podcast, basically at least one. Yeah. Maybe more. I think we just need to make a video where it's just us explaining all. Yeah, just just a video of us explaining all of them. It take like twenty minutes. But... We can go take the test again. <laughs> Well, that's gonna be in the description, by the way, guys. Uh, it's in it's in the description of the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm good at forming sentences. Anyway, now that people watching this is their first one are royally fucking confused. <laughs> it's okay, I'm recording it and I'm royally fucking confused, so Yeah. Uh so do you wanna move on to uh our rather your next topic? Uh, the album thing yeah yeah my album of the week because I'm jank I'm actually gonna go listen to it now is uh Demon Hunters of the Triptych from 2000 and or Triptych my dad calls it the Triptych it's not proper pronunciation but from 2005 Metalcore slash New Metal the first heavy album I ever listened to still my favorite album of all time and just all around flawless it is it. this album taught me to sing and scream <laughs> single handedly um, it's, in my opinion, the most Demon Hunter album ever made, and I mean, you know, it's 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 the thing that defined metal as a thing for me, and it is very freaking incredible. It's Christian metal. I'm sorry, it's so blasphemous, ironically, but it's the for, lyrics for both are metal amazing. fans and Christian. It's, it's blasphemous. And it was the first real great example of Demon Hunter doing a slow song with Deteriorate, which is one of my favorite songs of all time, uh, and it has my absolute favorite riff ever in Ribcage, which I'll have to play for you on bass at some point. But, um, and they have a cover of Prongs, Snap Your Finger, Snap Your Neck, which is phenomenal. Also, Tide Began to Rise is another good slow song, but it's just all around a flawless album, and I, I still listen to it, like, a ton, even though I've been listening to it for years. Hmm. Um, Demon Hunter in general is just freaking amazing, but yeah, it's. I have it on vinyl, sixty dollar freaking collector's edition for the tenth anniversary because it's my favorite album of all time. So of course, um, I'll have to put some pictures of that in the description uh, so you guys can see the glorious. That vinyl is beautiful. But yeah, it's slight just, fanboy. I'm slight. I mean, I have I have made a lot of fan art and written like all of my music is very heavily and like freakishly heavily inspired by Demon Hunter and Project Eighty Six because they're like the two bands that formed my opinion of music. So it's okay. I have something that'll make you feel like you're not that much of an over fanboy for later. 
We mean I have Demon Hunter, Project A6, Clutch, um, Thousand Foot Crutch, and like that's basically the four big ones for me. Hmm. Like I, and Chevelle. But yeah, like I, I have been formed all of my music opinion is formed from metal bands. <laughs> so I'm kind of <laughs> Yeah, I mean if I had to say like if you had to listen to only one song from this album, I would say Ribcage would have to be it's three three minutes forty seven seconds long and it's beautiful. Why do you know the exact number of seconds? It's in Fubar right now. I'm listening to it. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, I can I can actually recite every single lyric on this album. So I mean if you want. We could go uh, through. No. <laughs> I can sing the entire album straight through real quick. Um, it take about yeah. an hour. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll pass. <laughs> But yeah, it's just no offense. Yeah. it's it's great. I know you don't like screamy metal, but if anyone's into um, metalcore or new metal, Demon Hunter is very much a unique metalcore band, and they are they're why I like metalcore, but why I hate every metalcore band aside from them. Um, if you ever listen to Kill Switch Engage, they're very similar. They have a lot of similarities in the uh, the chorus, you know, being very clean vocals and. No, they're not whiny. They're very much brutal, rip your throat out and beat you with a cactus sort of band. But yeah. Anyway, it's music. Uh, it's like you can get it on Amazon for dirt cheap and it's on YouTube. So it's great. Everything's on YouTube. This is the album that made me the horrible human being I am, so. <laughs> and Definitely encouraging bad. people to listen to yeah, it. It's, it's freaking phenomenal. It's like, like a, this is, the, this is the reason I can go into a church and say I listen to heavy metal and have people look at me funny. I love it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move on to um, the pursuit of internet shit segment. Yeah, which is an acronym for piss. Let's see. Or should we start with the subreddit I linked to you? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna save my special thing for last. Mark, sorry, I had to uh, had to make noise there so I can time my recordings. But yeah, okay. So I'm now recording my screen. It's a glorious subreddit. I'll actually uh, zoom in a little bit on my screen here. You can see it a little bit easier. This is called Pussy Pass. It's a subreddit <laughs> about um, basically chicks getting away with very illegal things because chicks. Yeah. I have a really great one in here. I don't know if I bookmarked it. No. Anyway, there's a, a very good post in here about a chick who raped two children for years and did not get any time in prison. And that was what made me think, we're going to link this. Because people talk about male white privilege, you know. Um, it's not just dudes, you know. It's it's my favorite subreddit to look at this stuff and be like, I feel like I should be reading The Onion right now, even though I'm not. You know, it it took me a lot longer last segment for me to want to kill myself. <laughs> I'm already there. You seem to only imagine if the genders were reversed, like the eleventh post. Uh, yeah. They look like the kind of people who'd have that up too. They live in the backwoods in Louisiana somewhere. And I can say that because I know people who do. They just look at they fit that scene fall asleep. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's a the pair of deaf pedophile sisters who molested, raped, and sodomized a boy for 14 years and did not get jail time because they're deaf. Meanwhile, the guy who tried to meet a 13-year-old for sex is jailed. Then he was also deaf. So, mm -hmm. just for trying to meet, not counting the fact that they actually did rape him for 14 years, you know, that's fine. But no, <sighs> men have all the privilege. Yeah. It's just great. It's mm. so fucking depressing. Yeah, isn't it so flawless, man? I just don't under like 
ISIS recruiter home after four months prison time. Four months. Yeah, I, this constant of probably stalking her and like trying to you know catch her recruiting more people, which I guess would make sense. But at the same time, I mean, really, yes. I, I, wow. uh, let's look at the top of all time on the sub. There's got to be some good stuff in there. Mm, okay, well, I'll move on to something less, yeah. you know, depressing as all fucking hell. No, that's, that's kind of, no, okay, let's go to r slash teenagers, I think. That's the mandatory. I may or may not have been around the suburbs a bit today, so... Uh, I should know what this felt like. Let's see here. Oh boy, relationship post fifth down. I think, well, yeah, fifth down. Oh boy. Hmm. You gotta get that pussy. Post number five on r slash teenagers. His crush found out. Maybe he found out his crush likes him. <laughs> Neck beard. That is 18. Yeah. I understand being excited, but I mean, I mean, you know, poses an R slash team. Also, it's at 69 upvotes. I cannot touch this. No, can't. If I see someone make it 70, I'm, I'm getting downvoted. Oh, it's at 70. Downvoted. Hold on, I gotta drop it. <laughs> no, it's fluctuating too much. Oh, no, on. now it's not. Now it's at 68. Ah, now it's 67. No, go up. <laughs> 72, dang it. Uh, <sighs> it's like fluctuating so much. We just gotta leave it downvoted. I'm gonna. 65. 66. <laughs> 69. Uh, okay, we're gonna link. You guys find this and you make sure it stays 69 forever. It's probably way higher by the time. internet salt mine minions. Yes. Rant, fuck outside. No common needed. Hmm. Okay. Dang, that's not, I was hoping he was like gonna like bang someone on a park bench. <sighs> Stories, man. Stories. Let's see. There's not really anything good on here. Lots of Harambe. I'm I'm sick of that fucking ape. Memes. Oh, I put it back at 69. Look. Oh, here's oh, one I found earlier on um, waifuism. Oh, boy. Oh, it's got <sighs> the thing. Can my waifu be based on fetish content? Serious question. I don't know if this belongs here. I'm sorry if it doesn't. I know this is strange, but there really, but there isn't really anyone I can ask about this. But I have a fetish. The specific fetish isn't important, but it involves houses. This is, what? Is, is, <laughs> is it all acceptable to have a wife who performed the special fetish with me? I haven't done this yet <laughs> with her with her yet. I just want to make sure it's acceptable. <laughs> Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thank no. you for your time. Don't rape your wife, Hausu. Wife Hausu. <laughs> House waifu, even. I'm not drunk, I swear. I know oh, some of my family drink it, I'm not. There's just a ton of vodka downstairs, so I could Good pull a simian. Vodka. Swap it with some water. Filthy plant water. Go drink it with my girlfriend. That I don't have. Oh, the references that no one gets. Yeah, because that episode's corrupted. Oh, it's glorious. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, why is every post, like, why has everyone got Miku? Bruh. Are, are, you know. I, know. I saw someone who had Darth Vader. <laughs> ah, glorious. Yeah. I don't know. Like, if I had to pick a wife, I don't know who, man. Like, I don't even want to think about it because then it's like weird. But just thinking about it is just disturbing. Oh, God, I found a thread. Um, How would you impress your waifu? Let's see what uh, these comments are. <laughs> Uh, find her a really rare pet slash book, even if it's a book, and where's my 
So you're going to get your non-existent waifu a pet. This is how um, things starve yeah. to death. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's a Darth Vader person. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that username. Please don't be that one. <laughs> it's weird enough already. It's just, you know... I don't think I have any qualities that would be impressive. That's why you have a waifu and not a girlfriend. <laughs> Nick Valentine. Oh my god. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Do you, if, you, if you don't get that, that's a synth uh, character from Fallout 4. <laughs> oh, detective dude. Oh, yeah. yeah Why yeah, is that yeah, your waifu? Yeah. <laughs> god damn it, man. Oh. Am I losing my love? Oh boy. This has got to be good. Oh God, yes. Uh, see, the, whenever I see something like this, I like I want to try this and see like if I can understand. Like maybe if I do it, it'll make sense. And then I'm like, but I'd have to do it. I don't know if it's worth the pain. I like that song, dude. <laughs> With just my I, brain. I I feel like we need to go, like delve into this culture like and you get a heart to heart, a heart random up, waifu below. and just try to figure out why this exists oh, that's who it would be it would be Haruko <laughs> cause Rickenbacker or maybe Lisa okay. from Everlasting Summer cause she played a year old and I really like year olds too <laughs> and also yeah, so because we, she we both... punched Simeon in the back of the head so oh, yeah hard plus. to not. Then again, Lena did almost chop his face off. That's true. It's You're really... totally fucking spoiling it, but you know. Uh, no, I'm just saying like... See, you spoiled it. Because you said it was a spoiler. People thought I was joking otherwise. I won't give any other spoilers about that, but yeah. Okay, whatever. I mean, no one even knows what... Wait, no, we said the name, didn't we? Yeah, I mean... Fuck. Let's, let me put it this it way. It doesn't matter. If you get to that point in the story, that will be the least shocking thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh... Oh, boy. There's gonna be a picture thread here. How did you and your waifu first meet? In a bookstore. <laughs> what? <laughs> Top comments in a bookstore. <laughs> This has to count as some sort of mental issue. I think it does. It's like... Will on, my man. waifu accept me anymore? My they friend just told Discord. my wife... Oh, God. My friend just told me my waifu... That my, just told my waifu that I have met for ADHD will she accept me anymore help me guys you are the only ones that can help me <laughs> oh oh god these people what the fuck this is like the most mundane thing to freak me out but like Satori has done that for me with literature loving her has made me in more interested in in-depth literature I want to be able to have good conversations with her about it. It's a freaking fake character. Bruh. Bruh. Go to a store. Talk to a cashier. Or just someone buying an apple. Talk to someone. Please. Go find your cousin, man. It'd still be an improvement. <laughs> My food simulators? Honey pop. Oh god, oh god, this is a Haruka guy. Your waifu is insane. Seriously. 
Although I don't blame you because freaking Haruko is incredible. Best character. I think I've had enough of that sub for now. No, no, I'm staying. All right. I love it. I, I like. I, hang on, I've got to read the serious command relationships rules. Only one wife was allowed. They don't like polygamy. Hmm. They cannot be involved with a real person while also claiming a waifu. So, can't have a girlfriend and a body pillow. Um, uh huh. God. It's. It's just a real. The thing. Yes. I'm sorry. But it, it is. I want to meet a person who does this and discuss how fucked up they are. Well, they have a Discord. I know, but I feel like it would be weird to show on your Discord. It's like, hey, y'all motherfuckers need Jesus. <laughs> Texas. Oh, man. Texas is made of waifus, though. Like, this is the most weeb state in the universe. I don't understand why. I know so many Texas weebs. Let me think. What, what else? Uh, what are subreddits? Like everything, all the weird ones I have are not safe for work. Oh. R slash incest. Just let me know whenever you're ready for the final one. The final what? Um, my special thing for this segment. I'm, I'm going through. Oh God. Oh, so the son and daughter are asking their mom to join. Uh huh. <gasps> 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 oh, that's disgusting. I, you know, I just uh, should incest be legalized. I'm not saying necessarily no, but I mean, no. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, maybe not like full illegal, but it, I don't think it should be a normal thing. I'm just saying, it does not no. seem like a, uh, no. Like, yes, maybe your sister's pretty, but there are other people who are pretty as well, and they're not your sister. Yeah. I mean, let's just be real here. Like, I love my sister, but I don't love my sister. <laughs> yeah. Which is saying something, because I hate everyone and everything, so. <laughs> I'm a ball of putrid vile and hatred. Anyway, what's your thing? Alright, so this is going to be the last one, then? Yeah. Oh, boy, get ready. For the entire Sonic fan base to be summarized in one thing. Oh god, what is this? Oh god, no. Allow me to read this for you. Hold Cold me. Steel the Hedgehog. Bio. That's <laughs> <sighs> of my acumen, sorry. Oh, Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> Cold Steel was born with the special power. He was stronger than all of his classmates in the Sonic Fighting Academy. He served in the Sonic Military Fighting Shadow, and in the final battle against Shadow they were fighting and Shadow turned on him to the darkness and Cold Steel turned against Sonic and killed him. He lost part of his ear in that battle, which is why he does not and have part of his ear here. Please stop PMing me asking me why that's why. He also earrings aren't girly. Fuck you, Chaos Kid 663. Everyone can us. You're a fucking Pokemon scammer faggot. I think Likes <laughs> hurting people. Green badass. badass. Motorcycles. Motorcycles. Nine inch nails. Nine inch nails. The band. Killing. Death. Punk rock. Jinko jeans. Skulls. Darkness. Hot girls. <laughs> with 
big boobies who are sluts. Nine inch nails on finger. Earrings, purple, cool kind, not gay kind. <laughs> Dislikes, niceness, happiness. I won't put on nine inch nails on your finger Kevin would be so Robbins impossible. From school, fuck you, Kevin. Stop showing everyone I fucking deviant art. Trent Reznor. Piece of shit. <laughs> this likes Trent Reznor, but likes nine inch, nine inch nails. Naz Reznor. He's the vocalist, dude. Sh short, short nails. Chaos Kid 663. Mega, Mega ass faggot. Ass faggot. Salty ass Pokemon. My dad football. I hate mm -hmm. everything fun. <laughs> I'm not going to print screen my screen here. Oh, oh good right. lord. Oh, good lord. This is so fucking stupid. I don't know what to upload. I'm just gonna find out. I didn't even realize what I was doing until I looked over. I'm like, I just drew that. Like, yeah. I drew a dick. Mang. <laughs> yes, I didn't you realize. A you just drew a dick out of heaven. Finished. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> It's not a full work of art. I made some roast beef. Oh, okay. I'm gonna save this image. I'm gonna make this on my desktop. <laughs> Why? Oh god. Like, dude, I get called a cringy emo kid because I like metal and because I like flipping play bass, which I don't know why that's emo, but apparently it is. Mm. No. This, is, mm. this guy's probably like four. Yeah. Also, he can't spell mm. personal. He spells Psh, nothing personnel, kid. Gold steel, the hedgehog. This has to be uh, satire. Please tell me it's a satire. Mm. <laughs> it's not. I'm uh, pretty sure. I'm going back to the incest. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> slashed out of context. <laughs> uh, oh, gay incest. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's real good. Yeah, let's go there. <laughs> the wife sounds R slash like inbreeding. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. No. Don't. No, 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 Don't. No, 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 no. Okay, it's one thing if it's like your second cousin, okay? Like, first cousin, no, that's still like way, way too much risk. Second cousin, meh, meh. Brother, sister, hell no. You're asking for a child with eight legs. I don't think you want to give birth to Spider Baby. No. I just. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm Let's see what the top of all down. time is on gay incest. Let's see what that is. Fine. Uh, lots of porn. Lots of porn. Well. Oh, it's a circle jerk subreddit. Is that not just the actual incest subreddit of circle jerk? I, I mean... Uh, no. no. Mm -mm. I'm going to like the BDSM test. Take that a few more times just to make sure I'm still still more normal than these people. Uh, should, should, should we end the episode or do you. Uh, no, I don't think I have. I think I'm just going to go back to Cold Steel here. And uh, yeah, we can end on that before I die of pain. Fuck. Fuck my my is the fucking disgusting way.